the Mukden Incident, or Manchurian Incident, known in Chinese as the 9.18 Incident, was a false flag event staged by Japanese military personnel as a pretext for the 1931 Japanese invasion of Manchuria. On September 18, 1931, Lieutenant Suomori Kawamoto of the Independent Garrison Unit of the 29th Japanese Infantry Regiment, detonated a small quantity of dynamite close to a railway line owned by Japan's South Manchuria Railway near Mukden. The explosion was so weak that it failed to destroy the track, and a train passed over it minutes later. The Imperial Japanese Army accused Chinese dissidents of the act and responded with a full invasion that led to the occupation of Manchuria, in which Japan established its puppet state of Montecuo six months later. The deception was exposed by the Lytton Report of 1932, leading Japan to diplomatic isolation and its March 1933 withdrawal from the League of Nations. The bombing act is known as the Liutao Lake Incident, and the entire episode of events is known in Japan as the Manchurian Incident, and in China as the September 18th Incident. Chapter 1 Background Japanese economic presence and political interest in Manchuria had been growing ever since the end of the Russo-Japanese War. The Treaty of Portsmouth that ended the war had granted Japan the lease of the South Manchuria Railway branch of the China Far East Railway. The Japanese government, however, claimed that this control included all the rights and privileges that China granted to Russia in the 1896 Lee Lobanov Treaty, as enlarged by the Quantum Lease Agreement of 1898. This included absolute, and exclusive administration within the South Manchuria Railway Zone. Japanese railway guards were stationed within the zone to provide security for the trains and tracks, however, these were regular Japanese soldiers, and they frequently carried out maneuvers outside the railway areas. Meanwhile, the newly formed Chinese government was trying to reassert its authority over the country after over a decade of fragmented war dominance. They started to claim that treaties between China and Japan were invalid. China also announced new acts, so the Japanese people who settled frontier lands, opened stores or built their own houses in China were expelled without any compensation. Manchurian War Chang Tso Lin tried to deprive Japanese concessions too, but he was assassinated by the Japanese Kwantung Army. Chang She Liang, Chang Tso Lin's son and successor, joined the Nanjing government led by Chiang Kai-shek from anti-Japanese sentiment. Official Japanese objections to the oppression against Japanese nationals within China were rejected by the Chinese authorities. The 1929 Sino-Soviet conflict over the Chinese Eastern Railroad further increased the tensions in the northeast that would lead to the Mukden incident. The Soviet Red Army victory over Chiang She Liang's forces not only reasserted Soviet control over the Kerr in Manchuria but revealed Chinese military weaknesses that Japanese Quantum Army officers were quick to note. The Soviet Red Army performance also stunned Japanese officials. Manchuria was central to Japan's East Asia policy. Both the 1921 and 1927 Imperial Eastern Region Conferences reconfirmed Japan's commitment to be the dominant power in Manchuria. The 1929 Red Army victory shook that policy to the core and reopened the Manchurian problem. By 1930, the Kwantung Army realized they faced a Red Army that was only growing stronger. The time to act was drawing near and Japanese plans to conquer the Northeast were accelerated. In April 1931, a national leadership conference of China was held between Chiang Kai-shek and Chiang She Liang in Nanking. They agreed to put aside their differences and assert China's sovereignty in Manchuria strongly. On the other hand, some officers of the Kwantung army began to plot to invade Manchuria secretly. There were other officers who wanted to support plotters in Tokyo. Chapter 2 Events Believing that a conflict in Manchuria would be in the best interests of Japan, and acting in the spirit of the Japanese concept of Gekokuo, Kwantum Army Colonel Seishiro Itagaki and Lieutenant Colonel Kanji Ishiwara independently devised a plan to prompt Japan to invade Manchuria by provoking an incident from Chinese forces stationed nearby. However, 
after the Japanese Minister of War Jiro Manami dispatched Major General Yoshitsugu Tatekawa to Manchuria for the specific purpose of curbing the insubordination and militarist behavior of the Kwantung Army, Itagaki and Ishiwara knew that they no longer had the luxury of waiting for the Chinese to respond to provocations, but had to stage their own. Itagaki and Ishiwara chose to sabotage the rail section in an area near Liutao Lake. The area had no official name and was not militarily important, but it was only 800 meters away from the Chinese garrison of Biadaying, where troops under the command of the young Marshal Chang She Liang were stationed. The Japanese plan was to attract Chinese troops by an explosion and then blame them for having caused the disturbance in order to provide a pretext for a formal Japanese invasion. In addition, they intended to make the sabotage appear more convincing as a calculated Chinese attack on an essential target, thereby making the expected Japanese reaction appear as a legitimate measure to protect a vital railway of industrial and economic importance. The Japanese press labeled the site Yutao Ditch or Yutao Bridge, when in reality, the site was a small railway section laid on an area of flat land. The choice to place the explosives at this site was to preclude the extensive rebuilding that would have been necessitated, had the site actually been a railway bridge. Chapter 3 Incident Colonel Seishiro Itagaki, Lieutenant Colonel Kanji Ishiwara, Colonel Kenji Doihara, and Major Takayoshi Tanaka had completed plans for the incident by May 31, 1931. The plan was executed when 1st Lieutenant Suomori Komoto of the Independent Garrison Unit of the 29th Infantry Regiment, which guarded the South Manchuria Railway, placed explosives near the tracks, but far enough away to do no real damage. At around 10.20 p.m., September 18, the explosives were detonated. However, the explosion was minor and only a 1.5-meter section on one side of the rail was damaged. In fact, a train from Changchun passed by the site on this damaged track without difficulty and arrived in Shenyang at 10.30 p.m. Chapter 4, Invasion of Manchuria On the morning of September 19, two artillery pieces installed at the Mukden Officers Club opened fire on the Chinese garrison nearby in response to the alleged Chinese attack on the railway. Chang She Liang's small air force was destroyed, and his soldiers fled their destroyed Biadaying barracks, as 500 Japanese troops attacked the Chinese garrison of around 7,000. The Chinese troops were no match for the experienced Japanese troops. By the evening, the fighting was over, and the Japanese had occupied Mukden at the cost of 500 Chinese lives and only two Japanese lives. At Dali and in the Kwantung Least Territory, Commander in Chief of the Kwantung Army General Shigeru Honjo was at first appalled that the invasion plan was enacted without his permission, but he was eventually convinced by Ishiwara to give his approval after the act. Honjo moved the Kwantung Army headquarters to Mukden and ordered General Senjuro Hayashi of the Chosen Army of Japan in Korea to send in reinforcements. At 4 o'clock on 19 September, Mukden was declared secure. Chang She Liang personally ordered his men not to put up a fight and to store away any weapons when the Japanese invaded. Therefore, the Japanese soldiers proceeded to occupy and garrison the major cities of Changshan and Antung and their surrounding areas with minimal difficulty. However, in November, General Ma Zanshan, the acting governor of Heilongjiang, began resistance with his provincial army, followed in January by Generals Ting Zhao and Li Du with their local Jilin provincial forces. Despite this resistance, within five months of the Mukden incident, the Imperial Japanese Army had overrun all major towns and cities in the provinces of Liaoning, Jilin, and Heilongjiang. Chapter 5, Aftermath Chinese public opinion strongly criticized Chang She Liang for his non-resistance to the Japanese invasion. While the Japanese presented a real threat, the Kuomintang directed most of their efforts towards eradication of the Communist Party. Many charged that Chang's northeastern army of nearly a quarter million could have withstood the Kwantung army of only 11,000 men. In addition, his arsenal in Manchuria was considered the most modern in China, and his troops had possession of tanks, around 60 combat aircraft, 
4,000 machine guns, and four artillery battalions. Chang She Liang's seemingly superior force was undermined by several factors. The first was that the Kwantung army had a strong reserve force that could be transported by railway from Korea, which was a Japanese colony, directly adjacent to Manchuria. Secondly, more than half of Chang's troops were stationed south of the Great Wall in Hebei province, while the troops north of the wall were scattered throughout Manchuria. Therefore, deploying Chang's troops north of the Great Wall meant that they lacked the concentration needed to fight the Japanese effectively. Most of Chang's troops were under-trained, poorly led, poorly fed, and had poor morale and questionable loyalty compared to their Japanese counterparts. Japanese secret agents had permeated Chang's command because of his and his father Chang Tso Lin's past reliance on Japanese military advisers. The Japanese knew the Northeastern Army very well and were able to conduct operations with ease. The Chinese government was preoccupied with numerous internal problems, including the issue of the newly independent Guangzhou government of Hu Honmin, Communist Party of China insurrections, and terrible flooding of the Yangtze River that created tens of thousands of refugees. Moreover, Chang himself was not in Manchuria at the time, but was in a hospital in Beijing to raise money for the flood victims. However, in the Chinese newspapers, Chang was ridiculed as general non-resistance. Because of these circumstances, the central government turned to the international community for a peaceful resolution. The Chinese foreign ministry issued a strong protest to the Japanese government and called for the immediate stop to Japanese military operations in Manchuria, and appealed to the League of Nations, on September 19. On October 24, the League of Nations passed a resolution mandating the withdrawal of Japanese troops, to be completed by 16 November. However, Japan rejected the League of Nations resolution and insisted on direct negotiations with the Chinese government. Negotiations went on intermittently without much result. On November 20, a conference in the Chinese government was convened, but the Guangzhou faction of the Kuomintang insisted that Chiang Kai shek step down to take responsibility for the Manchurian debacle. On December 15, Chiang resigned as the chairman of the nationalist government and was replaced as Premier of the Republic of China by Sun Fo, son of Sun Yet Senator Jinju, another city in Liaoning was lost to the Japanese in early January 1932. As a result, Wang Jingwei replaced Sun Fo as the premier. On January 7, 1932, United States Secretary of State Henry Stimson issued his Stimson Doctrine, that the United States would not recognize any government that was established as the result of Japanese actions in Manchuria. On January 14, a League of Nations commission, headed by Victor Bulwa Lytton, 2nd Earl of Lytton, disembarked at Shanghai to examine the situation. In March, the puppet state of Montecuo was established, with the former Emperor of China, Pui, installed as head of state. On October 2, the Lytton Report was published and rejected the Japanese claim that the Manchurian invasion and occupation was an act of self-defense, although it did not assert that the Japanese had perpetrated the initial bombing of the railroad. The report ascertained that Montecuo was the product of Japanese military aggression in China, while recognizing that Japan had legitimate concerns in Manchuria because of its economic ties there. The League of Nations refused to acknowledge Montecuo as an independent nation. Japan resigned from the League of Nations in March 1933. Colonel Kenji Doihara used the Mukden incident to continue his campaign of disinformation. Since the Chinese troops at Mukden had put up such poor resistance, he told Montecuo Emperor Pui that this was proof that the Chinese remained loyal to him. Japanese intelligence used the incident to continue the campaign to discredit the murdered Chang Tso Lin and his son Chang She Liang for misgovernment of Manchuria. In fact, drug trafficking and corruption had largely been suppressed under Chang Tso Lin. Chapter 6 Controversy Different opinions still exist as to who caused the explosion on the Japanese railroad at Mukden. Strong evidence points to young officers of the Japanese Kwantung Army having conspired to cause the blast, with or without direct orders from Tokyo. Post-war investigations confirmed that the original bomb planted by the Japanese failed to explode, 
and a replacement had to be planted. The resulting explosion enabled the Japanese Quantum Army to accomplish their goal of triggering a conflict with Chinese troops, stationed in Manchuria, and the subsequent establishment of the puppet state of Montecuo. The 9.18 Incident Exhibition Museum at Shenyang, opened by the People's Republic of China on September 18, 1991, takes the position that the explosives were planted by Japan. The Yushukan Museum, located within Yasukuni Shrine in Tokyo, also places the blame on members of the Kwantung Army. David Bergamini's book Japan's Imperial Conspiracy has a detailed chronology of events in both Manchuria and Tokyo surrounding the Mukden incident. Bergamini concludes that the greatest deception was that the Mukden incident and Japanese invasion were planned by junior or hot-headed officers, without formal approval by the Japanese government. However, historian James Welland has concluded that senior commanders had tacitly allowed field operatives to proceed on their own initiative, then endorsed the result after a positive outcome was assured. In August 2006, the Yomiuri Shimbun, Japan's top selling newspaper, published the results of a year long research project into the general question of who was responsible for the Shoah War. With respect to the Manchurian incident, the newspaper blamed ambitious Japanese militarists, as well as politicians who were impotent to rein them in or prevent their insubordination. Debate has also focused on how the incident was handled by the League of Nations and the subsequent Lytton Report. A. J. P. Taylor wrote that in the face of its first serious challenge, the League buckled and capitulated. The Washington Naval Conference guaranteed a certain degree of Japanese hegemony in East Asia. Any intervention on the part of America would be a breach of the already mentioned agreement. Furthermore, Britain was in crisis, having been recently forced off the gold standard. Although a power in East Asia at the time, Britain was incapable of decisive action. The only response from Lee's powers was moral condemnation. Chapter 7, Remembrance Each year at 10 a.m. on the 18th of September, Air raid sirens sound for several minutes in numerous major cities across China. Provinces include Heilongjiang, Jilin, Liaoning, Hainan, and others. Chapter 8, In Popular Culture The Mukden incident is depicted in the adventures of Tintin comic The Blue Lotus, although the book places the bombing near Shanghai. Here it is performed by Japanese agents and the Japanese exaggerate the incident. The Chinese patriotic song along the Sungari River describes the lives of the people who had lost their homeland in northeast China after the Mukden incident. In Akira Kurosawa's 1946 film No Regrets for Our Youth, the subject of the Mukden incident is debated. See also Junji Kinoshita's play A Japanese called Otto, which opens with the characters discussing the Mukden incident. The 2010 Japanese anime Night Raid 1931 is a 13-episode spy-slash-pulp series, set in 1931 Shanghai and Manchuria. Episode 7, Incident, specifically covers the Mukden incident. The violent manga Gantz has a reference when an elder says that an occurrence reminds him of the Manchurian incident. Dutch death metal band Hail of Bullets covers the event in the song The Mukden Incident on their 2010 album On Divine Winds, a concept album about the Pacific Ocean theater of World War II. The television drama Kazoku Game deals with the history textbook controversy in episode 4, mentioning the Mukden incident. The 1969 novel Black Rain by Masuji Ibuse mentions the incident on numerous occasions. Chapter 9, Sources and Further Reading Ferrell, Robert H. The Mukden Incident, September the 18th to the 19th, 1931 inches. Journal of Modern History. 27, 66 to 72. DUI, 101086 237763. 1,877,701. S2 SID 144,691,966. Huang, Grace C. Chiang Kai-shek's Politics of Shame, Leadership, Legacy, 
and national identity in China. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Asia Center. ISBN 9780674260139. Joet, Philip. Rays of the Rising Sun, Volume 1, Japan's Asian Allies 1931-45, China and Montucuo. Helian and Company Limited ISBN 978-1874622-215. Lenzen, George Alexander. The Damned Inheritance. The Soviet Union and the Manchurian Crises 1924-1935. The Diplomatic Press. Longha Swain, Su, Chang Ming Kai. History of the Sino-Japanese War. 33, 140th Lane, Tunghua Street, Taipei, Taiwan, Chengwu Publishing.c.s. One Man, Location. Lucas, David G. Strategic Disharmony, Japan, Manchuria, and Foreign Policy Online. Matsusaka, Yoshihisa Tak. The Making of Japanese Manchuria, 1904-1932. Harvard U Asia Center. ISBN 978-0674-012066. Ogata, Sadako N. Defiance in Manchuria, the Making of Japanese Foreign Policy, 1931-1932. Yoshihashi, Teikiko. Conspiracy at Mukden, The Rise of the Japanese Military Online.